Our guest this evening has had an incredible career in the music industry. He's had a string of hits in the 60s and 70s with several groups, including the Detergents, the Cufflinks, and most notably, the uh, Saturday morning cartoon megastars, the Archies, uh, with whom he sang lead vocals and scored a number one hit with 1969's Sugar Sugar. He continues to record and tour, and we couldn't be more thrilled to welcome to the show tonight Mr. Ron Dante. Ron, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the program with us. My pleasure. Great to be here. Well, uh, Ron, I tell you, as somebody who grew up reading Archie comics, it is definitely an honor to get to talk with the guy who provided the lead singing voice to everybody's favorite cartoon rock band. So uh, how'd, you get, uh, how'd you get involved with the Archies? Well, you know, I, uh, I had heard that they were uh, doing a TV show uh, for Saturday morning. <laughs> And the, the, the man behind it was a guy named Don Kirshner, who was the man behind the monkeys. I mean, he was the one who put them together and gave them all their hits. Anyway, he was doing the music, and uh, I had known Don Kirshner. I had worked for him as a young, struggling songwriter. 
So I called him up and I said, could I come up and uh, sing for the, I heard they needed a lead singer for the group. They needed somebody to be Archie. So I called up, I went to the studio and I uh, did an audition. And uh, Don Kirshner loved my voice and uh, the, the line producer, Jeff Barry, who was a terrific singer, uh, writer, producer, also loved my voice. So I ended up be getting the job of Archie and I knew I'd be on every Saturday morning. So I was thrilled with that. Now, now, not only did you sing lead with the Archies, but correct me if I'm wrong, you produced and wrote a number of the songs too, right? Yes, I did. I, I was given the opportunity to write a bunch of things for them on each album almost and uh, produce some of the records of them. But it's, it's really fun singing, doing the being the singing voice. You know, the writing and producing is another kick, but boy, it's great when you see, watch the cartoon show and you get to see the cartoons of singing and there you are, you're the voice. It was like almost being, you know, it was just great. Now, when the Archies as a band was at the uh, the height of their fame, uh, were you actually ever able to go out and perform that stuff live? No, never. In fact, I, saw, I had to sign a deal that said I would be, it would be anonymous. I would sing the voice of Archie, and any time the... Uh, actually, there was a show called The Ed Sullivan Show, which was very popular. <laughs> they actually, Ed Sullivan introduced the Archies the week we went number one, and they played the cartoon. <laughs> So uh, it, was, it wasn't until a few years later that uh, the public became uh, aware that I, there was a real person singing the voice of Archie. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Hey, Ron, thanks for calling. This is Pepper Paul. And I, I just, uh, last year, you contribute your first Archie's album in 37 years. It was Christmas uh, record, record entitled, Quick of quite simply, of course, the Archie's Christmas album. After so long, how did this return to the Archie uh come about well you know i was very frustrated that the comic book people who really own the archies and the name and the characters all these years the archies about 65 years old uh they uh they had a, they were at a comic con in new york city last year and uh, they invited me to sit at their booth and meet the fans and sign some autographs and i met the president of archie comics and i said to him we should get together and do a christmas album and we'll do a Christmas album. This is the thing that'll be different. First of all, it's been 37 years since our last album. <laughs> but the kids, the Archies are still teenagers. So I said, let's do an album and we'll feature Betty and Veronica a little more in it, like uh, Hannah Montana or High School Musical. And that's the idea that sold them on it. So I, I got a distribute, you know, distributed, put it out. And uh, sure enough, we had our first album out in 37 years and it was our Christmas album which it did really well, and it'll be out again this Christmas with uh, some bonus tracks. But that's the way I got it done. I had to talk directly to the top person at Archie Comic Books. Well, that'll live forever, and every holiday that comes up from now on, you'll, we'll, people will be hearing that. And is there any plans to do any more recordings with the group? Yes, I am working on uh, putting together the Archies Go to Nashville and do a, a kind of a pop country album with them. Uh, I'm working on it now. Hopefully we'll get it done by this summer. And that'll probably be the next big Archie project. Uh, it, it, I figure we can get some guests on there, you know, uh, tail, you know, different artists from, uh, you know, Reva McIntyre and Faith Hill, and get some different people to come sing with us. But uh, it wouldn't that be fun? I, I just thought, you know, uh, Nashville's a great music town, and the Archies would fit perfectly. No kidding, that is awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> it could be a huge comeback for the Archies. I'd love to see you guys have a, a hit um, 40 years later. You never can tell. I mean, the stranger things have happened. You know, as I said, they still have a great big fan base, and a lot of the, the parents have shown their kids Sugar Sugar and the Archies. Of course, the Archie uh, comic book, you know, their, their TV show is on in a couple of networks around the country, so it's starting to get some play again. Well, the great thing about Sugar Sugar, too, and I think probably is the fact that it's one of those songs that I don't, I don't care who you are, you can't help but love it, and you can't get it out of your head for like a week. So yeah, I, I, <laughs> That's the truth. Anywhere I go, if I meet young or old or middle-aged, anywhere in the world, if I say, people say, oh, you're the voice of the Archies, I go, yeah, do you know Sugar Sugar? They look at me and they go, honey, honey. I mean, everybody knows this song, thank goodness. That is wonderful. Well, back in 2006, you had um, a chance to perform Sugar Sugar at the Jerry Lewis MDA telethon with Tony Wine, who was the original female vocalist on the recording. Was this the first time the two of you ever performed it live together? Yes, Tony Orlando was hosting the New York segment of the Muscular Dystrophy TV show out of New York. And he said, could you and, uh, you and the original voice, Tony Wine, come sing Sugar Sugar live for the first time? And we did. And it was such a thrill to sing with my friend Tony Wine. Miss Tony is, is actually in the Tony Orlando band. She goes out and performs with Tony Orlando, but because uh, they're very good friends. But it was a really nice moment to, for uh, for me to sing with the girl singer who did "I'm Going to Make Your Life So Sweet," 
and uh, it was a, it was a great great uh, time together. I mean, it was as if we never stopped singing together because we blend so well. That is so nice. Yeah. Ron, this is Norm from the Pepper Paul Show. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I know you've got such an amazing resume. Could you tell us a little bit about how you got started in the music business as a producer and a recording artist? Well, you know, getting started was uh, I was lucky to be enough to be born in New York City. I grew up in a little town called Staten Island. We had to take a ferry boat to uh, to Manhattan, and then you would go up to the music mecca, which was Forty uh, Ninth Street and Broadway, with a building called the Brill Building. And I would go up there when I was a teenager, and I'd go visit the publishers and the record companies and say, I'm a singer-songwriter, would you sign me? And this man, Don Kirshner, I just mentioned, had a, the, one of the biggest publishing firms on, in the world at the time. And I, I got in through his secretary and, I, and actually got a job there as the staff demo maker. So I was the guy who did all the uh, demonstration records for songwriters like Carole King and Jerry Goffin or Barry Mann and Cynthia Wilde. I, the first day I was there, I met Neil Sedaka. And I ended up singing background on one of his records. And I was only 16, 17, so that was kind of my entree into the music business. It was my college, because I learned so much from all those professionals. And I just took it and ran with it. I never stopped. Well, you know, one of the things, too, I read, uh, it was interesting, I didn't know about you. You actually wrote, um, is it true you wrote a song for uh, Jay and the Americans? Because they're uh, friends of the, of the radio program. <laughs> Yes, uh, Jay and the Americans, uh, I actually was in the studio, I played on it, it was a song called Raining in My Sunshine, it was one of their later uh, singles, and I, I was thrilled to meet uh, Jay, uh, you know, uh, Jay Black and, and the guys in the group. Uh, fortunately, because I was working for a good publisher, I got my songs recorded by a lot of major artists at the time, and I got to actually see them in the studio and meet them, like Johnny Mathis or Gary Lewis and the Playboys, uh, all these stars of the, of the era. Uh, I got to meet in person Miss Connie Steve, uh, Connie Francis uh, was one of, one of the people I wrote for and stuff. So it was a real thrill. I've got to tell you, I'm always a fan of the, of the artists. I, even though I'm an artist myself, there are some people that are just thrilled to meet. Like I met the Everly Brothers once, and they were, they were my idols were growing up. So I'm very lucky to you know, get a chance to say hello to these people. And while you were having some fun with the Archies, you uh, kind of did a little moonlighting on the side with another group called the Cufflinks, and of course everyone knows them, or their song Tracy. So how did the Cufflinks come about, actually? Well, I had recorded early uh, for a guy named Paul Vance, and uh, he had some some songs. He called me up when I was doing the Archies, and he said, would you come do this demo for this song? And I went into his office, and I listened to him. He played me this song with his partner, Lee, uh, Lee Pockris. And they, uh, these are the same guys who had written Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini. So I knew they were hit songwriters. And they played me Tracy. And I just loved the song. And they said, well, you come do the demo. So we, next day we went in the studio, and I, I put about 20 voices on that, all mine. I did backgrounds, ba ba bas and la-la-las, and oohs and ahs, and I sang lead. And uh, sure enough, about three weeks later, it came out, and I found out that I, the dem demo was a record, and it was called The Cufflinks. <laughs> and uh, so I ended up put, doing a whole album with the group The Cufflinks and a bunch of good songs on there. I was very happy to work with those guys. Fortunately, then, because I was anonymous on the Archies, I could do any number of groups. And so at one point, I must have sung for 12 groups in one year. Uh, a few of them succeeded, you know. That is, that is really, really interesting. And as much as uh, uh, I love all these songs, we play them all the time on Cruising 92.1. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you had a, a first hit actually came in 1965, way before the Archies. A novelty song with a group called The Detergents. And, of course, as everybody knows, I'm a big fan of comedy. And uh, and it was a parody uh, of Leader of the Laundromat. Yeah, it was. we were, we were big fans of the Shangri-Las. Uh, in fact, the guys who wrote Tracy and Itsy Bitsy Teeny, they wrote Leader of the Laundromat as a kind of a parody goof. We were the first Weird Owls. <laughs> I mean, we really were. We, would, we were parodying all kinds of stuff. And uh, to, 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 we recorded it. Uh, one night in five different segments. So I never heard the record all put together, the, the, the detergents, uh, leader of the laundromat, until about three, two or three weeks later when they played it on a local radio, uh, Battle of the Hit Singles. And we won one night on Saturday night uh, against the You've Lost That Love and Feeling. <laughs> it was really funny that, you know, this, this very funny parody, I thought it was a very funny parody of Leader of the Pack. Oh, it was awesome. We really enjoyed that. And we still play it, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's got, who's that banging on the piano became a keyword. 
for a lot of radio stations, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. We did, we did a lot of good things in there. And uh, it's it's funny that album is on eBay. People pay like three or four hundred dollars for the original album. Sheesh. And you guys, actually, I wish I wish my mother kept all those albums. Oh, I know. Yeah. I'll tell you what they're worth now. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys actually uh, went out on tour with the Rolling Stones. Is that correct? We've toured uh, with Dick, Clan Dick Clark's Caravan of Stars, and at certain points in big cities like Philadelphia and Detroit, we would be joined by the Rolling Stones, and we were the next to the last act. So. Before, you know, so people were screaming for Mick Jagger as we're doing Leader of the Laundromat. <laughs> and it was a very scary moment. I said, I hope they don't throw things at us. But we got through it. People wanted to laugh and wanted to be, you know, they really enjoyed that, that uh, parody we did. But the Stones were great to be on, on uh, tour with. I must say, Mick was a really good guy and uh, very businesslike. You know, people think he's like a wild and crazy rock and roller. He was very businesslike. He took care of business, boy. Well, after the Archies, uh, you went on and you became a, a very successful producer. You've worked with a number of uh, legendary artists, uh, such as John Denver, Dionne Warwick, Ray Charles, and quite extensively with Barry Manilow, uh, producing, I think, most of his huge hits. Uh, what was it like working with him for all those years? Well, it was just great. We met doing a commercial together. We were both singing background on a commercial, and he said to me, I'm working with this girl, Bette Midler. I'm her piano player, but I really would like to record on my own. I said, well, let me hear some of your songs. So I, uh, we, I met him at my office, and he played me Could It Be Magic, one of his first hits. And I said, well, you've got to record you. And I took him in the studio to record him. About a year later, Mandy came out. And uh, from then, it was a, a wild ride for like six years. We never left the charts because I did 18 singles with him in a row and six, six or seven albums over that, that period. And it was, um, I'm still working with him. Even We just worked on his 80s album, the best songs of the 80s, love songs of the 80s. I worked on the 60s and 70s albums he did. So uh, it's, it's been a, a long collaboration over the years, but uh, I was very proud of those records. Uh, Mandy, Can't Smile Without You, especially Copacabana, which won, the, which won a, a Grammy that year. Uh, Barry's a really good guy. He's, he's like a background musician. He really didn't expect to be the front man. He thought he'd be like Henry Mancini. He wanted to be an orchestrator, a ranger. But fate just pushed him. We pushed him up front, and he really sings well. you know. And he's got, now he's got millions of fanalos out there. He's still at... <laughs> Still in Las Vegas playing the Hilton. Yeah, I, I'm a uh, self-proclaimed fan I, uh, <laughs> I did get the chance to go see him last year. Um, he did a, a one night in Philly, and he just he's still great, I'll tell still you. Still great. He, he gives the fans what they want, and he, he really shows up and performs for them. He really loves his fans, and he loves his life. He, he loves performing and making albums. He, now they, they talk about the greatest love songs of all time is the next album he wants to do. So... Uh, He's, he's a fine performer and a great man. You know, what you see on stage is basically the same guy you see, uh, you know, you meet backstage. He's, he's thrilled that God has blessed him with a great career. And uh, I'm very proud of all the records I did with him. Uh, your producing's also earned you a couple of Tony Awards as well, correct? Yeah, I kind of like, because I grew up in New York City, I did look at all these Broadway musicals. It, because the recording studios I worked in were right next door to the theaters. So I, I kind of was interested as a teenager and as a young man. So when I uh, got some success, uh, had some success with uh, my music, I decided to invest and produce Broadway shows. And one of my Broadway shows that I produced in 1978 with friends of mine, it's called Ain't Misbehavin', is back on the road right now. And it's, it's playing here in Los Angeles next month. It's all over the, the country with uh, great guest stars in it. And uh, I was very fortunate to get involved in theater the way I liked because I could pick and choose the shows I wanted to invest in and pr produce. So uh, it was, it, it, theater is a whole different business, though. Theater is a much different business. You, you know, you, you don't have that much control over it once the director takes over. You know, fortunately, I hired great directors. Oh, that is so cool. And, and you're now still performing. So what, we, so what can an audience expect when, you come out to, when they come out to one of your shows, Ron? Well, the, because I have had such an eclectic a career, I've, I've dabbled in different areas and worked as producer, writer. I can do a bunch of things. I can do my Archies and my Cufflinks at records. I can do a, a detergent song, which would be fun. Uh, I also sing some of my own commercials that I was a commercial singer for many years. I sang thousands of spots. So I can do some of those. And, of course, I can do a few of the artists that I've worked with, some of their songs, like Manilow or Pat Benatar or Cher. So my audience gets a pretty balanced evening of hits. I try to do mostly hits, and then the cover songs I do, like I do one cover song of I'm a Believer, The Monkeys, I'm a Believer, because I auditioned for Davy Jones's part, and it was, it was neck and neck. 
I, it was either me or Davy Jones was going to be a monkey, <laughs> and and Davy had the better accent. So Davy got the job, you know. So I say, instead of Davy, I'm going to sing "I'm a Believer" tonight. <laughs> That's great. Well, Ron, have you got any new uh, new projects in the work you'd like to share with us? Well, you know, I've got a brand new thing called Ron Dante's Super Sock Hop that I go out and I do the '50s and '60s songs that are, that's we just finished Las Vegas. I'll be doing a new solo album this year. I want to do some uh, some uh, great love songs myself on an album for some of my fans. And uh, you know, the arch, and as I mentioned before, I'm gonna, I want to do the new uh, Archie's Go to Nashville as a CD, which uh, hopefully we get out by September. Well, I'll tell you what, when that comes back on, uh, when, when that album does come out, we'd love to have you back on. And uh, could you do us a favor now before you go? Um, we we'd want to thank you so much for being on with us. Would you mind doing a promo for uh, our station? No, not at all. Not at all. Sure. Oh. Hi, this is Ron Dante of the Archies. You're listening to the Pepper Paul Show, cruising 92.1 WVLT. Rock on. Yeah. Hey, Ron, thank you so much. That was uh, that was awesome. Uh, Thanks, guys. I appreciate uh, it. It was Thanks. awesome. Well, Ron, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to be on with us. Um, and the next time uh, you are in the area, definitely look us up. And we'll look you up, too. That's for sure. Thank you, guys. Nice to, nice to speak to all of you. Uh, continued success there. And here's the pop music and great oldies being played all the time. Tracy, when I'm with you, something you do. Bounces me off the ceiling, Tracy, day after day, when you're this way, I get a love and feeling, come with me, don't. So glad. See that?